In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make these really cool campaign images for your brand. And they look like they're Photoshop, but you can actually make everything in Canva. We're making the landscape variant, and then we're also turning them into some social media variants or posters for your campaign. Now, if you want to save a lot of time and effort while making designs, I also have a lot of templates available that you can download via the link in the description below. And we're starting from a nice blank canvas. Now, first, I'm going to add a nice color to the background, so I'm going to Elements, and here I want to type in orange. Go to Photos, and then choose a nice orange gradient. I'm selecting this one, and dragging it on the screen. I'm releasing it at the side, so it instantly fills the entire screen. That's what I want. Next, I'm going to add a product to this page. So in this case, it's a can of Fanta, and placing it in the center. Scale it down a bit, and create multiple copies, so that we have four next to each other, or however many that you want to cut it in. On the first one, I'm going to crop it so that we only have the top available. On the second one, I'm going to crop it down until we meet that line. And then do the same with the logo. Repeat until you have the four parts that you want. And then this one, we crop it to the bottom. But we want to make sure that everything nicely matches in like a staircase format. So we still have the entire can, but split up into four parts. Now we want to go to Elements again, and here type in Orange Slice. And here you can select one of the slices that you like. I'm choosing this one, and making it slightly smaller. Now we go to the App section on the left, and we want to type in Skew. Open the Reshape app, and now we can play with either the Distort or the Perspective one. So I'm going for Distort, and then dragging the top handle down until we nicely meet the bottom, or it looks like we're looking at it from the side. Oops, I released it, so do again. And drag it down until it looks like you're watching it horizontally from an angle. Click Save once you're happy. And I'm going to adjust the crop mark. This way I can now drag it on top of the cans. I'm going to space them out just a bit more so we can easily see what we're working on. And then place the slice of orange on top of one of the cans. We want to make sure that it nicely meets the edges. So I'm going to nudge it over and then increase it until it nicely fits the can. This way it looks like this sliced can is revealing the orange inside. I'm going to repeat this for the others. So place it here and then on top. You can always make it smaller, but you have to reuse that skew effect. So distort, then you have to distort it even further if you want. But make sure that you don't lose the crop shape. So maybe increase that crop shape, distort it again, and then make it even flatter on this one and save. So you can create some variations if you want. There you go. This looks like a nice cut through of the can. You don't have to do both sides, but you can do both sides if you want. Maybe let's flip this one horizontally, vertically, until we have the realistic effect. I think. This one was quite good. Let's distort it a bit further so that they don't look like exact copies, but it sort of looks good. There you go. And then I'm repeating this for the others, putting those all nice on the top and the bottom. If you don't want the bottom one, you can easily do it like this. I think that will, in the end, look for the most realistic effect that we only have the top ones. And maybe this one here. There we go. Select the elements, Ctrl G and group them together. So select them both and group. So we have four shapes to work with. There we go. I'm going to close this tab. And now I'm going to place them in the middle of the slide and rotate them slightly. So this one, let's rotate it a bit. The other one, let's slightly rotate it to the other angle. It looks like it's sliced up. Repeat the same process for the other ones. You don't have to stack them up nicely, or you can do it in some sort of a random way. That is all possible. But here we can nicely see that top and bottom matching and giving that, revealing that inside effect, which is quite cool. They can also overlap, so it's it's a bit positioning until you find the right balance of your, of your design. Let's do it like this. Select them all. Make them a bit larger. Maybe that's too much. Let's use the arrow key to bring them closer. There we go. And we just have that white part touching. 
and then position them on the slide until you're happy with the positioning. Next, we're going to add some realism to the slide. And for that, I'm going to the elements and type in shadow. We're choosing the graphics panel. And then I'm choosing one of the circular or more elliptical shapes. Let's make it smaller and place it at the bottom. I think this one, we can go for a more extensive one. There we go. It's a bit more subtle. I think that one might be better for the bottom part here so that we have this sort of floating effect. If the shadow is too hard, you can always increase or decrease the transparency to make it more subtle. This way it looks like the cans are floating and that's what we want. Now in between the layers, also here I think we can add some some shadow effects to, to add some realism. Let's say we put a nice cast shadow here where it only covers that part of the... Oops, we shouldn't use that crop. We should just scale it down a bit and then rotate it nicely so that it still gives that drop shadow on top of the, the bottom layer here. Now, of course, we have to reposition layers and then drag it in between those layers. You can see if we scroll out, it gives that shadow effect. So that's what we want. I'm going to repeat this for the others. Let's bring it to the front first. That looks good. And then drag it underneath the logo layer. And maybe a final one. Drag it in between. If we can make this work, maybe this one is a bit too much. Let's reduce the transparency since there's a lot of light coming in, so it doesn't have to be as harsh. I'm going to remove this one here at the top. I think that's not really adding anything to the, to the design. So this already looks quite good. Now let's add some maybe spray can elements. So we have that popping open of the soda can. So let's look for water mist, maybe. Go for graphics. And here I can see a few nice ones. So let's select one. This is quite good. Even though it's white, I think we can make it work. So let's say we position it here, where the slice is happening, and that sort of releases this soda from the can. Also here, the positioning, let's drag it underneath, so it comes from in between the two layers, and really from the center part. Now you can always use that, your arrow keys, to nudge it into the right position. This one looks good. Now for the effects, where the soda is maybe a bit more yellow, we can always go to edit and then go to the filters. So let's go to filters. And here we can already see some alternatives with the filters, the bronze, the Nordic, that are a bit more in the, the darker area that we want to get. So I think this nostalgia looks quite good or the, these are too much. Maybe if we tune it down, you can find that right balance. So depending on what you want, you can use any of the filters to get that right color. I think I'll go for the, well, the first ones. The bronze was quite good and maybe a bit more intense. So we see the balls. Now I'm going to copy. Maybe let's flip it vertically and do like a smaller one here at the top. Maybe let's flip this one horizontal first and drag it to the other side. Let's rotate it a bit so that it's not all in the exact same way. It's more of a natural shapes that are forming. Go to layers position and we drag this one layer up so it comes from in between this one. Let's try to cover that part where it's very obvious like this here. So if we cover that with a shadow, I think that will already look quite good. And maybe we do the water mist. We look for a different one as well. If we go recommendation, see all. Let's see if we can get a different sort of tone. Here we're missing the bubbles, so I kind of like the bubbles. Nah, this will be good. And then we have the top one really going all directions. That's the one that we need. Also here we can easily select this one, copy style, and see if it applies on the top one, which it does. So that's good. And let's position it just in here. A bit larger. And then nudge it with the arrow keys. You can always use the shift key to increase it with some larger increments. What I don't like here is that everything is in the same line, so either we're going to reduce this one, not with a crop, but just the, the shape. So that everything is more in a natural dynamic way that it's happening and not everything is aligned. That's always, always good in these sort of designs. There we go. 
Now we're going to add the final touches to the slide. And for that, I'm going to the element step again. And let's type a orange slice again. Photos. And then let's see if we can find a good one. We can always use the existing one here. Let's maybe do that for consistency. And also here, yeah, if we just put it straight on the slide, it won't look as realistic. So we're going back to that reshape app. And maybe perspective this time. And we're going to adjust the perspective so that we can get some nice angles of this shape here. You just have to make sure that you don't go outside of the line. So if I do like this and increase the connection so it goes off the, the border here, it will also cut. So you don't want that. So you don't want to crop the image. You just want to shift it towards an angle, save. And then maybe rotate it if you want so that it flies in. See this one here from the bottom, make it large. And let's add a few more of these on the slide. Some of them we're going to make with this cube. Oh, you can only do one at a time. So maybe distort this time. And just keep playing around until you have a good distortion effect. I think here if we grab the corner and the side, it will be cool. Save. Rotate. There, yeah, I like this one. Distort again. There we go. We can flip it to the other side. Almost like it's tipping over. Save. And if we do a few of those, we don't no longer need those. We can just increase or decrease them in size. And just scatter them around the design. Rotate them every once in a while. So it's like flying slices of the orange. You can always flip them horizontal, vertical to get some, some different angles. So it's not looking like an exact copy. That always looks more professional, I would say. So maybe a nice large one here as well on the side. With a copy here on top. And a few smaller ones where if you don't want the sharp edges, maybe from a can, you can always hide them. So if you don't like any particular corner of your design, you can always, let me close this, cover them up with some design elements and that will give you some more freedom and flexibility if the tool doesn't do exactly what you want to create. Let's also pop one in the back. So put this below the cans. I think it adds for some depth to the slide. And maybe this one here, we can do it behind the sprays. Let's drag that below. And rotate it like this. Sort of like they're flying a bit towards a different places on the on the design. As a touch, I want to select one of those, edit, and then go to blur. Select whole image, and then increase the intensity. So it looks quite blurry. Go back, and you see if we now copy this style towards one or two of the others, we can see they sort of go out of focus and it really creates that depth in your page. And that's what we want to what you want to see. It's those subtle design elements that create a lot of depth in your in your design and it feels like some parts are further away than others and i think it's a really cool touch and we're almost getting there i think it's very dominant in the orange i think we can use some touches of green so with the oranges maybe go for some orange leaves so orange leaf maybe spell it correctly there we go photos and then choose one of the bright leaves like this don't really like that stem, so I'm going to shorten it. Or maybe use this one. I think it's a cleaner leaf. That will look nicer in the design. And also here you can just rotate them. Scatter them around in your design. Control C, Control V to create some duplicates. Flip them around horizontally. So they're all pointing nicely towards the center. Or at least they look a bit more random. Maybe a few smaller ones here in the back. Let's flip that one as well. Send it all the way to the back. But of course, before the background or in front of the background. And then here, one or two smaller ones on each side. Flip, flip, and rotate it a bit. Now also for these, they're getting quite dominant very fast in the picture. So if you don't want that, you can easily blur them out like this one. So I'm going to select this leaf here, go to edit, blur and then i'm going to 
put it almost to the max because you always see it's a leaf it will be very recognizable but since it's a small element i think it it helps if we make it way more subtle so it doesn't distract but it adds that variety of color to the page maybe even one somewhere here in the background i would put it all the way to the back select the position and then just click that back button until it goes behind everything except for the, the background image maybe a bit smaller there we go let's drag this one to the side so we can nicely position them and create some depth to the page here we're getting a harsh cut so if you don't want that just flip it a few times and then send it to the back rotate and send it backwards and this will sort of hide that harsh cut you can do the same here flip it vertically and position send backwards and now let's preview this on full screen already and this is how you can create this really cool eye-catching design in Canva in just a few minutes and using all these standard elements that are available in Canva. So you can really create a very nice creative animations and designs for your campaigns in Canva. Now let's have a look at how we can turn this into, for example, a social media banner. And for that, I'm going to resize and then let's select an Instagram, in our case, a square post. So go to Instagram ad and then copy and resize. This will only resize and this will create a copy and resize. So you have both versions to work with. Give it a few seconds and then you can open this Instagram post. As you can see, it already does quite a good job in transforming this into a Instagram design. I'm going to select the base elements here. So not the ones on the side and then holding the option key and scaling everything upwards so that it covers the majority of the design. And now we're going to fine tune it. So rearrange some of the objects. Maybe delete a few. I don't think we need as many in this smaller design. Just a couple of the leaves. Just make sure that you have a few nice large ones here in the picture. Some smaller ones in the back. And let's flip this one here to hide that rough cut. And maybe also here put this one right next to the can. And drag those a little bit larger to the bottom the accompanying leaf there we go and i don't think it matters if some of the sprays go outside of the image i think that still looks quite good oops let's rotate it maybe create a copy here rotate it a bit smaller and then just on the side i think this already looks like quite a good eye-catching visual so let's put those on full screen and in some mockups and this is how you can create these really cool design images for your campaigns in Canva, which looks like a Photoshop where you're using actually all the Canva elements. You can use them for landscape formats or you can transform them to social media variants that you can share on your brand page. Now, if you want to learn more about Canva, make sure to drop a follow and watch the video on the screen right now.